Good evening and God bless you. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Relevant Word. We greet you from the Mount Bethel Church of God, where our senior pastors are Bishop Dr. Cecil and Pastor Dolores Mullings, our assistant pastor, Bishop Gary Sean Mullings, the whole host of ministers, leaders, and Mount Bethel family. We tell you, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We have a selection for you, and afterwards, we'll have a relevant word. You've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all, so we say, If I had 10,000 tongues, still wouldn't be enough, we say, When you heal, you heal completely. Now be more. You see, he can do that. We say. So much. Lord, he has done so very much. Oh, come for on. Me. I know you feel his presence. Stand oh, to your feet. What, what shall I render to Jehovah? To Jehovah. For he has done. For he has done so very much for me. Come on. Let's say now. Thank you for staying tuned. Hopefully that selection was a blessing to you. I want to bring you a relevant word from one verse of scripture found in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now we are very familiar in this age and this time of the process of qualifications. If you want a, f a job, you have to fill out an application uh, in which you have to qualify to be selected for that job. 
If you want to go to school, you have to fill out an application and go through a qualification process at whether or not you'll be accepted in that school. And there's also a process of qualification for everything from relationships to any anything worthwhile in this world. There seems to be a process where you are evaluated whether or not you qualify for the benefit that you are seeking to receive. But when we look at this particular text, when we understand it in its full capacity to change us or to affect us, we realize that God does something amazing and he disrupts the normal qualification process. For the Bible says that he shows his love based not on what we have done, not based on if we are qualified, but he shows his love in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Understand the premium of God's love. Understand the value of God's love. Understand the debt and the height, the width and the breadth of God's love. Songwriters have been writing songs for years and can't fully grasp how great God's love is. One songwriter said, we would run out of ink. We would run out of paper. We would run out of time if we sat down to try to unpack how great a love that we have in God. And the expression of that love comes to us even beyond our ability or our capacity to qualify for it. For we understand that God shows us love even before we qualify, even before we filled out the application and even after the application was put in. When we were under the microscope, God expressed his love for us even when we don't qualify. We were still in sin when Jesus died. He knew that we were unqualified. He knew that we could not meet up to the standard. He knew that we missed the mark. Yet, he still expressed his immense love for us even when we did not qualify. God's love extended to us without us qualifying for it. I want you to also consider that the way God's love in this day and age would be considered a bad investment. It would be considered a worst case scenario. It would be considered reckless. For when people are investing in stock, they invest in the best stock. They invest in what they feel would give them back the greatest return. When people invest in purchasing a house, they look at the house that, that, that gives the most to what their needs are. When people are looking to put money into something or an uh, an investment into a business or even into candidates, you look for the best. You look for what can give you the greatest return on that investment. But when Jesus looked at us before dying, he died in spite of us. He died in spite of understanding where we are weak, where we would go wrong where we would fail. In spite of everything he knew about us, he still gave his life as an expression of God's love. Some would have said, that's a bad investment. Are you sure you want to do this for him? Are you sure you want to do this for her? Don't you know their secrets? Don't you know their weakness? Don't you know their struggles? Don't you understand their proclivities? And yet, with the full scope of an evaluation process because he knows everything, he said, I I will still hang on the cross. I will still take the thorns. I will still take the nails. I'll still take the ridicule. I'll still take the sin and carry it because of the love of God. God's love was a reckless love. God's love, not even was, is an immense love. God's love is a love that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Why would God love me in spite of all that I've been through or all that I've done to him? Even while in sin, he sent his son to die. God is investing in a bad investment. The last thing I want to leave with you because it seems kind of dreary to to complain about why God loves us so much, but the simple fact is God is still loving. 
He is still investing. He is still pouring out. And he's pouring out with his grace. He's pouring out with his mercy. And he's pouring out with an invitation to not only accept his love, but walk in it. To, to, to love him back. He gives his perfect love to receive our imperfect love. God is actively pursuing you. He is actively pursuing me with a perfect love in spite of our imperfect love. He knows that we are inconsistent. He knows that we have struggles, but yet he comes to us every morning with a brand new mercy. He comes to us every day with a consistent grace. He comes to us with unmerited favor, not because we have done anything right, but because he loves us. So tonight, I want to encourage you to not only receive, not only to, to, to take in God's love, but to receive the invitation to love him back. Although we might be imperfect, we might be inconsistent. God is a faithful God who wants a loving relationship with us, who wants to hear from us, who wants to have a love exchange with us. He'll take our wounds. He'll take our imperfections. He'll take our weaknesses and he'll extend his grace, his love. But he wants us to live and walk in a committed relationship. And so the invitation is open to you today to receive the perfect love of God and to walk in his unmerited favor in spite of the fact that we don't even qualify. He shows us his love in that we were still sinners and Christ died for us. Will you receive his love tonight? The invitation is open. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you especially for your love, your love sacrifice that some would have deemed to be a bad investment. We thank you tonight and we pray that you would help us to not only receive that love, but help us to commit to that love and commit our lives, our hopes, our futures, and to walk in a relationship with you that we have not earned, a relationship that we don't deserve. Thank you for extending the invitation and may this invitation be extended to those who are listening and watching. And we thank you that the grace abounds towards them tonight. And we give you praise. Get glory out of our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you tonight for joining in for Relevant Word, and I pray that you would receive and walk in the perfect love of God for your life, and it will take over and bless you tremendously. Until next week, we look forward to seeing you for another episode of Relevant Word. God bless you. With us today, before you go, we wanted you to know that if you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior or you're in need of prayer, feel free to reach out to us. You can call or text the number listed below. That number is 609-531-8388. A member of our ministerial team will be glad to pray with you and encourage you in the Lord. Again, thank you for worshiping with us and we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you.